Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming today. We are pleased to have the opportunity to make this presentation. Our topic for today is Across Kubernetes Namespace Boundaries, Your Volume Can Be Shared Now. OK, let's begin. Let me introduce my first. My name is Takafumi Takahashi. I work for Hitachi Bantara. I have been contributing to the Kubernetes community by implementing provision volumes from cross namespace snapshot. My name is Masaki Kimura. I work for Hitachi. I have been contributing Kubernetes community to make rub rock volume feature and CSI feature GA. And I designed and proposed the cap that Takafumi is implementing. Today, we will talk about the feature in the cap in detail. Just a disclaimer before we go any further, this session is, explains the specifications, designs, and implementations which are under discussion and development. Depending on the discussion, they are subject to change. Our talk is divided into six parts. First, I will explain the existing Kubernetes concept and features related to the issue that we are trying to solve. Then, I will share the issue use cases and discussions around the, this feature. After that, Takafumi will take over, explain the current design and implementation, show demos, and then conclude. Okay, so let's begin with the existing concept and features related to the issue. The first concept is namespace. In Kubernetes, Namespaces provide a mechanism for isolating groups of resources within a single cluster. Namespaces separate a cluster virtually for multiple users to share resources without interference. For example, as described in the diagram, resources with the same name, like part one, can be created by multiple users if the namespaces are different, like NS1, and NS2. And if the artwork is set properly, we can make that only user one can access to the pod one in the NS1 to prevent other users, like user two, from accessing to the pod. The point here is that namespace is used as a security boundary to prevent malicious users from accessing to the resource in a namespace. There is one more point that I must refer to. Not every resource is namespaced. Kubernetes resource consists of namespace resource and cluster scope resource. Namespace resource are usually consumed by normal users. Examples are port, deployment, service, and so on. On the other hand, cluster scope resource are usually managed by admins, so normal users won't have permission to modify such resources. Examples are node, storage class, persistent volume, and so on. Then, I will explain storage-related features from a namespace viewpoint. Let's begin with PVC and PV. In Kubernetes, volumes are managed through persistent volume claim, PVC, and persistent volume, PV. PVC is a namespace resource that users create, and PV is a cluster scope resource that admins or provisioner create and manage. A user creates a PVC by specifying their access mode, volume size, and so on. Then a corresponding PV that meets the specification is created and bound to the PVC so that the user can use the volumes through the PVC. Because PVCs are managed uh, namespace resource and users access to the volume through PVCs, volumes can only be accessed by users with the right permission. Let's see the detail behind the scenes. Once a PVC is created by a user, first, a CSI provisioner detects that a PVC is created then a provisioner calls CSI create volume method to the CSI plugin. Third, the plugin 
creates an actual volume in the backend storage. First, the provisioner creates a PV and sets a reference to the actual volume. After that, bidirectional binding is created between PVC and the PV. By Kubernetes, the volume becomes ready to be consumed by users through the PVC. Next feature is volume snapshot. Kubernetes has a feature to take a snapshot of a volume. In a similar way to the volume, snapshots are managed through volume snapshot, VS, and volume snapshot content, VSC. VS is namespace resource that users create, and VSC is a cluster scope resource that snapshot they create and manages. A user creates a VS with specifying which PVC to take a snapshot from, then a corresponding PV, uh, for a corresponding sorry, VS, VSC, that means the specification is created. Because VS are namespace resources, and the user accesses the snapshot through VS, a certain snapshot can't be accessed from other namespaces. Let's see the detailed behaviors behind the scenes. Once a VS is created by a user, first, a CSI snapshot detects that a VS is created. Second, the snapshot there calls CSI create snapshot call to a CSI plugin. Third, the plugin creates an actual snapshot in the backend storage. Fourth, the snapshotter creates a VSC and sets a reference to the actual snapshot. After that, bidirectional binding is created between VS and VSC for snapshotter. The snapshot becomes ready to be consumed by users through VS. The last feature is creating a PVC from a VS or a PVC. Just taking a snapshot won't be useful. We need to create a volume from the snapshot to actually consume it. Also, we can create a volume from an existing volume. For users to specify which VS or PVC to create a volume from, users need to specify VS or PVC in the data source field in the PVC, as shown in the YAML file. An important point here is that namespace can't be specified because there is no namespace field in data source field, so data source need to be in the same namespace. Let's see the detailed behaviors behind the scenes. The difference from the empty volume creation is marked in red. First, a CSI provisioner detects that a PVC specifying data source is created. Second, the provisioner calls CSI create volume method with specifying volume content source to the CSI plugin. Third, the plugin creates an actual volume by copying data from the actual snapshot in the backend storage. Other steps are the same. By using this method, the data is copied to the newly created volume but the data source need to be in the same namespace. Now that all the related features are explained, let's move on to the issues and use cases. As explained, a PVC can be created from an existing VS or PVC in a different namespace. It is simply because namespaces can not be specified in the data source field. However, the reason behind this specification is that just allowing to copy any volumes in other namespace causes a security issue. Namespace should be a security boundary to prevent malicious users from accessing to namespace resources. On the other hand, there are some use cases that require parsing data beyond namespace boundaries. Let me explain two typical use cases in the next slide. The first use case is copying data from production namespace to a development namespace. 
as described in the diagram, let's assume that there is F31.0 part, which is writing data to a PVC in the prod namespace. If a developer is developing F31.1 in the dev namespace and would like to test with the actual data, copying data from prod to dev is required. The second use case is using guarding image in one namespace to from multiple other namespaces. The most common use uh, example would be VM image for QWERT. The same guarding image are expected to be used from multiple namespaces, so putting the same data in each namespace will be inefficient. Therefore, guarding images are expected to be shared across namespaces. Before sharing details on how we are solving this issue, let me share a history of discussion around this issue. This issue and use cases are not new ones. Actually, they have been discussed since 2018. Four authors opened five different caps to continue to try solving this issue. I really would like to say thank you to all the people involved. Let's quickly share the initial approach to solve this issue and challenges in current using this approach. The initial approach was transfer of PVC or VS by rebinding. Actually, if you are an admin and have a permission to modify the PV, you can manually transfer PVC by using the steps described in the diagram. In this sense, this approach automates the way that cluster admins can do for users to transfer PVC1 in the NS1 to the NS2. The manual steps are first, create a new PVC in the NS2, sort the binding by binding a new PVC and the PV, and unbinding the original PVC and the PV. Third, delete the original PVC. If you need a copy of a PVC, you can clone the PVC in the same namespace after transfer as a fourth step. To make normal users achieve the same operation with a security issue, we plan to define a request approvers type of API and make a controller transfer volumes only when there is an agreement on transfer between namespaces. After discussions, this approach wasn't chosen, so let me quickly explain the challenges for implementing this approach in the next slide. There are two big challenges. The first challenge was that it is difficult to roll back if errors occur or ch changes happen during the transfer process. In this approach, five resources are involved. On the other hand, changing by direction binding is not an atomic operation, so it is difficult to keep the status of all the resources consistent. The second challenge was that it is difficult to handle secret referenced by PVC or VS. In some CSS drivers, secrets that are referenced from PVCs are used to process operations in the backend storage. A secret that is assumed to be in the same namespace cannot be transferred. As a result, such a PVC may cause an issue due to the lack of secrets. Now, let me hand it over to Takafumi. In this part, I will talk about current design and implementation. Current design utilizes two features that were recently added for another purpose. First, for extension of data source, we utilize any volume data source feature. Second, for granting cross namespace, we utilize reference grant API. First, I will talk about extension of data source. To extend the data source, we utilize the any volume data source feature. As, as we can see in, in Rex diagram, 
existing data source field only allows specified persistent volume claim and volume snapshot. So if other resources than PVC and VS is specified, it was regard in, regarded an invalid data source. However, SIG storage found a use case that user defined CRD needs to be specified as a data source. So any volume data source feature is added. Any volume data source feature allows any resources to be specified via a newly added data source rate field to maintain a computability behavior for special via data source fields remain unchanged. This feature it itself allows only the same namespace to be special as a data source. So it doesn't directly extend the field for our purpose, but it opens a way to extend the existing field keeping computability. To allow special namespace as a data source of a persistent volume claim, namespace alpha here is added to data source ref. For computability purpose, existing data source field doesn't accept namespace. Therefore, users are required to pass namespace via data source ref field. Next. I will talk about reference grant. Reference grant is added in Gateway API. It is used to allow Gateway API to access to the resource across namespaces. A resource owner creates a reference grant to explicitly allow that reference. For example, I'll show you a diagram to allow access from a HTTP root in the NS2 to a service in the NS1. The service owner creates a reference grant in the NS1. In the reference grant, HTTP root should be set as a kind in the from section. And service should be set the kind in the to section. Also, the service owner should specialize the namespace in the from section. Controllers that implement Gateway API check the reference grant if the access is granted avoid malicious access. In this slide, I will talk about how to grant cross namespace access by utilizing Reference grant. Reference grant was originally for Gateway API. However, we decided to extend it for our use cases. In our use case, what we need to do is to allow access from PVC to VS in another namespace. So, for example, as showing a diagram, to allow from a PVC in the NS2 to a VS in the NS1, the VS owner creates a reference grant. In the reference grant, persistent volume claim should be set as a kind in the from section, and volume snapshot should be set as a kind in the to section. Also, the VS owner should be specialized the namespace in the from section. To achieve it, we need to implement a logic to CSI provisioner to check if the access is granted by reference grant. Note that we, Kubernetes community, found generic use case for utilizing reference grant. So, Reference grant is planning to move to new SIGOS API group in Kubernetes 1.28 with some enhancement. It is currently being handling as a cross SIG work with Gateway API, SIGOS, and SIG storage. Thank you for all the people involved. 
Next, let me, how, let me explain how this feature works by using examples. First, I will talk about the behavior from user viewpoint. Let's assume that a user wants to promise on the PVC one in the NS2 from the VS one in the NF one to provision volume from a data source in another namespace, the owner of data source must grant such an access. So the VS1's owner creates a reference grant in the NS1. In the reference grant, persistent volume grant should be set as a kind in the from section and volume snapshots should be set as a kind in the to section. Then the user can provision the PVC one from the VS one by specifying the VS one in the data source review. Note that namespace is special via the extend alpha field. By this way, if Cross namespace volume data source feature is enabled in the cluster. Users will be able to provision volume from data source in another namespace. I will talk about detailed CSI provisional behavior behind the scenes. CSI provisional behavior is divided into five steps. First, a CSI provisioner detects that a PVC specifying a data source in a different namespace is created. Second, a CSI provisioner confirms that the data source is allowed to access via the reference grant in the NS1. If the CSI provisioner is not allowed to access the special data source, the provisioner will output an error and the volume will not be created. If CSA provisioner is allowed to access special data source, it will proceed to the next step. Other steps are the same as existing behavior. So no change is required in the CSA plugin to use this feature. Next, I'll talk about development status. This feature became alpha in Kubernetes 1.26. We plan to move to the feature to beta in Kubernetes 1.29 after reference grant be become beta in SIGOS and move GA in Kubernetes 1.331. The scope is only provision of PVC from cross namespace data source, not including transfer of PVC or volume snapshot. Currently, supported data source is volume snapshot and persistent volume claim. In this future, we plan to support any volume data source. And feature get name is cross namespace volume data source. If you want to use this feature, you need to enable this feature in both Kubernetes and CSI external provisioner. Next, I will show you a demo. In our demo, we will use Kubernetes 1.260 and external provisioner 3.4.0. We will deploy WordPress in prod with empty volumes, take a snapshot, and deploy another WordPress in dev, word, dev from the snapshots. We divided this demo into six steps, and I will explain each step with the diagram. We will make sure that the demo's environment is configured as expected. There are three points. First, extend version of Kubernetes and 
external provisioner are deployed with the feature get enable. Second, the prod and dev namespaces are created. Third, link spot is deployed in the default namespace for accessing to WordPress. Now, let's see the demo. First, let's make sure that it's a deploy is the expected version of Kubernetes and cross namespace volume data source feature get is enabled. Next, let's make sure that the CSI driver is deployed and cross namespace volume data source feature get is enabled on the external provisioner. And let's make sure that the prod and dev namespaces are created and no no unnecessary resources are deployed in each. Finally, let's make sure that links is deployed in the default namespace. We can confirm that it is deployed as expected. Now, let's follow the demo scenario. The first step, deploy prod WordPress in the prod namespace by using the step described in Kubernetes official document. Both WordPress and MySQL have a, de have a deployment that manages one port, and it is accessed by service and has one PVC attached to it. Also, note that the PVC are empty when deployed. Now, let's see demo. Base and overlay are defined as a customized template, and WordPress and MySQL are defined to be deployed with the same definition in the prod and dev namespace. The only difference between dev and prod in the base file is that the namespace field is defined as prod. And we don't, don't special data thought field in the PVC definition because it is created from an empty volume. We should check the PVC definition file and confirm that the data thought field was not specified. After that, let's deploy WordPress in the prod. After the deployment, Let's wait a minute and check if the port status began running and that the day have started normally. The second step is accessing to prod WordPress. This step write, write data to the PVCs by accessing to the WordPress. On first time access, the User will see the REST web page, which prompts the creation of a WordPress. On second time access, the user will see the right web page. Now, let's see the demo. First, connect the pro WordPress using CUR links. So, log into the link spot. Then, connect to the pro WordPress site. We are connecting the Prod WordPress for the first time, so need to fill required information. For example, is the site title Kubecon Europe 2023. After that, install WordPress and complete the initial setup. The third step is taking a snapshot. This step takes a volume snapshot from persistent volume claim for both WordPress and MySQL in the prod namespace. Now, let's see demo. Create a volume snapshot YAM for it to take a snapshot and define its persistent volume claim information, etc., and deploy. Let's wait a minute, check if the volume snapshot was taken successfully. Fourth step is creating reference grant. 
This step creates a reference grant for allowing access to the snapshots in the pro namespace from the PVC in the dev namespace. Now, let's see the demo. In the reference grant, confirm that persistent volume grant is set as the kind in the from section and volume snapshot set as the kind in the to section. After that, confirm that the reference grant YAML was deployed and created successfully. Fifth step is creating a dev volume from pro snapshot and using them. This step deploys WordPress in the dev namespace and PVC used from WordPress approvisioned from the snapshot in the prod namespace. Therefore, PVCs are created by special the snapshot in the data source left field. Now, let's see the demo. First, check the YAML file. In order to deploy dev workspace in the dev namespace, we should specialize the prod volume snapshot in the data source left field. Confirm that dev WordPress and the MySQL definition file are correctly specialized persistent volume claim data source left field. It could, be, it could be confirmed that broad volume snapshot was special in dev WordPress. After that, let's deploy dev WordPress in the dev namespace. After the deployment, let's wait a minute and check if the port status became running and that they have started normally. The sixth step is access to dev WordPress and checking data. The data is copied from pro to dev. So if we access to the dev WordPress, we should see Quebec on Europe 2023 instead of the initialization page. Now, let's see the demo. Let's connect to dev WordPress. Now we, now we see Quebec on Europe 2023. As a result, it could be confirmed that dev WordPress was able to use production data in another namespace. Finally, in conclusion, there are two issues in Kubernetes 1.25 or prior. First, data in production namespace can be copied to development namespace for testing. Second, golden image in one namespace can be shared, can, can't be shared from other namespaces. As a resolution, you need to use Kubernetes 1.26 or later, and PVCs can be provisioned from PVCs or a snapshot in a different namespace by using cross namespace volume data sort feature. For cluster admin to enable the feature, cross namespace volume data sort feature get is required to be enable for both CSI provisioner and Kubernetes controllers. For users to utilize this feature, a owner of data source needs to create a reference grant to allow accessing a data source from a PVC. Then a user in another namespace can create a PVC by specifying a data source left field with namespace. Finally, it is important for us that we want you to try cross namespace volume data feature and give you a feedback on this feature to Sig Storage, please. Thank you so much for your kind attention.